Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Phantom Ryu again. Um, today is the 9th, I think, of September. Um, it's kind of like Groundhog Day around here. Um, every day is pretty much exactly the same, so the dates don't even matter. Um, two things I wanted to talk about today that really kind of ticking me off, and it's both having to do with products that I used in the past and really liked and have both pretty much gone to shit lately. Um, the first and easiest one is uh, Western Digital hard drives. Today I went out to the local Best Buy to get a external one terabyte USB 3.0 hard drive. Now I ended up with a Seagate and it still got all of the little packing plastic on it because I had to check and make sure it worked before I did it. The reason I had to check and make sure it worked was because the first thing I did was bought a Western Digital. Now, I have always had um, good, good experience with Western Digital products until the last two Western Digital products that I bought. The first was, I want to say it was like a 750 gigabyte uh, external hard drive. It was a full-size external hard drive, one that needed an external power connector on it. But this one also had um, and I don't know if anybody re remembers this, but it had an eSATA connection, which was like an external SATA, which should run just as fast as an internal hard drive. Well, Western Digital screwed up something when they configured the uh, eSATA port, and the, it wouldn't make a good connection with an eSATA cable, so I was pretty much doomed to using USB 2.0, which is the whole reason I bought that particular external hard drive was for the faster eSATA connection. But I bought that one when I was in Iraq, so it wasn't just as easy as going back to the store and returning it. So today I went and bought a Western Digital 1TB external USB 3.0 uh, laptop size hard drive, not a full size hard drive. Get it home, plug it in, start to try and copy files back and forth. The purpose I bought it for was to back up my uh, YouTube videos of my Oblivion playthrough and sit reps like this. And as soon as you start copying a video, bam, the drive disappears and you can't do anything. You have to stop it, hook the drive back up, and just nothing. So every time you tried to actually use the hard drive for the whole reason you'd use a hard drive, you know, copying files, it would just disappear. Looked online, found that this is a known problem with the Western Digital, uh, my, it's not my book, but it's something essentials, and you know, it just, it's a known issue. And the problem is, yet again, Western Digital screwed up in manufacturing the place where the cable plugs in. That's apparently the whole problem. Now rather than, you know, get out a knife or something and you know, cut away some of the plastic to make it seat properly. I said, screw it, went back to Best Buy, got the Seagate, the Seagate's $10 cheaper than the Western Digital, and it works just fine. So, Western Digital, I'm done with you. The second thing I want to rant on, and you guys will probably be like, Bam Ryu, this is old news. And you're right, but let me explain it. The thing I want to rant about is NCAA football 13. Now, I'm from Alabama. We love college football. Therefore, I used to buy, I started buying uh, NCAA football games with NCAA Game Breaker 97 or 98 on the original PlayStation. And I bought that one because it was Keith Jackson, who's like one of the greatest commentators of all time for college football. Well, when Game Breaker died, um, after EA got the exclusive license to the NCAA, um, I started getting the EA version. And for the same reasons that everybody else complains about the NCAA football franchise, the last time I bought one was NCAA Football 09, and it, I was just sick of buying the same thing every year and not really getting anything new. So this year, I decided to pick up NCAA 13. I figured it's been four years since the last time I touched one of these. Surely they will have put in enough new stuff um, to make it feel like a decent purchase. Now, 
Nice thing about this was that it was only $40 at Target. My local Target was having a sale. My wife and I happened to be in Target. And I wasn't going to get it because I didn't feel like spending the full $60 on it because of what I mentioned before. Well, so 40 bucks, buy it. And yeah, there, there is enough new stuff in the past four years that I feel like it was worth $40, let's put it that way. And then I noticed that the DLC is almost required to play the game. I don't know how many sports game fans are on this channel, probably not too many of them, but the most tedious, time-consuming part of NCAA football, at least from the EA version, has always been recruiting. They put so much stuff into the recruiting section that I don't even like playing the recruiting. Um, I just usually sim all of it. I don't care if I get all five-star recruits because uh, I don't play on Heisman difficulty, so it doesn't really matter if I get all five-star recruits. But the DLC is the Dynasty time savers, little things like recruiting assistants and, uh, and other things to make Dynasty go faster. Well, that's almost essential to me, and guess what? It's DLC, and it's paid for DLC. It's not like something you get automatically for purchasing it new. No, this is paid for DLC regardless of whether you've got it new or not. Um, there are also a bunch of power-ups for Road to Glory mode, which is where you create a football player and take him through all four years of college and try to turn him into you know, a Heisman Trophy candidate, yada, yada, yada. Well, a bunch of power-ups for those that make it make it a whole lot easier to accomplish all of the goals in uh, Road to Glory mode, those are also paid for DLC. Now a lot of you might be saying, hey wait a minute Phantom Ryu, you're being a hypocrite because we saw your DLC woes videos on Street Fighter Cross Tekken and uh, Mass Effect 3 where you said, oh there's nothing wrong with DLC. No, that's not what I said. What I said was, if you don't like these practices, don't buy the game. Now, because I only paid $40 for the game and not the full retail price of $60, I went ahead and bought the DLC. And I've spent my money, I've evaluated the product, and I will never buy NCAA football again as long as these things that used to be called cheats that you just put in a code somewhere in the game to access now we have to pay for them. Um, EA, that's a load of shit. That, that's worse than day one DLC, that's worse than you know having to buy the game new to be able to play online. Um, I didn't know about this before I bought it. Had I known about it before I bought it, I probably wouldn't have purchased the game. Again, it was an impulse purchase because the game was on sale for 30% off. So, whereas I enjoy playing the game, it's, um, it's a good game, it's college football, I mean, it's just fun. Um, what they've done with this game has made me never want to buy it again. Now, to fit this in with my DLC Woes videos, this is exactly what I'm talking about. If you don't like the practice, if you don't like the product that's offered to you, don't buy it. I'm not asking any of y'all not to buy it, I'm saying I won't buy it. And the only way game companies will listen to you is if you vote with your wallet. You can complain until you're blue in the face, and apparently only Bioware is going to listen to you. But then they're going to completely change the game and not really do any, or the ending to the game, and then not really do anything you wanted to happen. But the point is, whining, complaining, doesn't do anything. You have to vote with your wallet. I'll be voting with my wallet. EA, this is the last time you're getting my money for any of your football products. I don't like the pros, so I don't buy Madden. I don't watch the pros. I don't like the pros. I'm from Alabama. We like our college football. You will never see me buy this product again as long as you have paid for cheats in your game. To 
me that's absolutely unacceptable. That crosses the line that I was talking about earlier in my DLC Woes videos, and I'm just not going to put up with it. So, that's my special rant video for today. I hope you guys agree with me. Agree with me, disagree with me, that's fine. Um, as I've said before, you can disagree with me all you want. Let's just do it in a respectful manner. I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of people that say I'm a hypocrite for, you know, for what I've said, but I think it's a pretty clear distinction. Um, this I didn't know about beforehand. I should have read about it beforehand and didn't. Spent money anyway without doing my research beforehand, which is one of the points I was making in the Street Fighter Cross Tekken uh, video, is that you knew what you were getting in the beginning if you had just done your research. I did not do my research, so I really don't have I really don't have a good reason to be upset, to be honest with you. But I am upset, and that is the straw that broke the camel's back for me with EA. So I'm Phantom Ryu. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys again later. Bye.